All right, Rowie. Your time, mate. Finished in 10th after a surprise top eight appearance last year. Back out of finals, unfortunately. But as a Saints fan, how do you see the season? Um, yeah, well, this year it was all about which was going to be the real St. Kilda. Was it the mediocre one or was it the top eight one? But yeah, it was the mediocre one. I think I ended up having them finish either like fourth or fifth at the start of the year. So, I mean, yeah, it was a very, very ugly um, start and middle half. We we finished off all right, um, probably in like just top eight form, like, you know, around seventh to eighth form. But, you know, that being said, um, disappointing majority of the year. So, um, yeah, look, just trying to attack it next year. But it was a very deflating year for us Saints fans. Um, just Just hate the club. A lot of the time, so BNF though, got to go to a man that definitely don't hate. Uh, very much the opposite, Jack Steele um, would do everything for this man. Um, he's an absolute weapon. He's accumulated the most, I believe, MVP votes, MVP votes in the last two years. Um, so, Mister Consistent still somehow didn't manage to find his way onto an All Australian field um, both of those years. So, keep that in mind, All Australian selection panel. Um, but yeah, he just does just about everything. Um, this year worked on his uh, disposal use as well. So he just, you know, apart from being an absolute tackling uh, machine that racks up 35 and kicks a goal, he also started lasering some targets as well. So absolute freak of a human being, Jack. Um, most improved was Jack Sinclair. Um, obviously just didn't know what much about his career last year, um, but we moved him to halfback and he probably turned out to be our most, one of our most reliable players. Um off the halfback. I mean, you can put any footballer at halfback and they're all going to um, find 20 and play pretty decently. But um, now he uses composure really, really well, Sinclair, and he's got all the traits to be a good halfback. So good on him there. And best young player, we Maxi King, um, copped so much unnecessary treatment from fans this year. Um, you know, everyone's saying we've picked the wrong king, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I just, you know, saw a, a Twitter feed that basically what they did is they showed two players – just their stats, player A, player B, who would you rather? 91% went player B and that was Max King. Uh, player A was Ben King. So we didn't choose the right one. Um, uh, we didn't choose the wrong one, sorry. All those fans doubted us. But um, uh, obviously Ben's going to have a superb career when he comes to St Kilda as well. So um, good on Maxi for getting the young player of the year. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it's going to have to be a three out of 10 for the Saints. Did not live up to expectations at all. But um Maybe next year we can uh, we can attack it. Yeah, apologies if you boys are picking up. There's someone like jumping in my house above my room. Um, <laughs> no, mate, it's actually scaring the shit out of me, but um, the listeners won't hear it because I'll edit it out. Lucky, lucky McCorkadale is getting busy. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to work out what it could be. It must be Cam doing like burpees or something, but it's weird footy. It's actually like it actually is scary. My whole room's shaking. But um, Pilch, how do you think the saying is went, mate? Yeah, well, I too had them in the top four. I watched them against Port last season. I always this this game sticks out in my memory for some reason because they came to Adelaide. We were top of the ladder, and they absolutely belted us. And I just I thought they had more to give this year. I thought they were going to improve, and they just did the complete opposite. And I can understand Rowie and many other Saints fans' frustration because I just cannot pinpoint what it is like they've got a good list so I don't understand it but nevertheless giving them a four out of ten and the exact same three players I had to look at the stats for most improved and Sinclair was one pleasant surprise there so racked up some some possessions on half back and then King best young player as well yeah fair enough um obviously mine are going to be completely different uh, but yeah, gotta gotta agree with you. With the Jack Steele BNF came fourth in my Brownlow, absolutely tore it up. Uh, most improved, I've actually given it to Luke Dunstan, my M8 in Supercoach. Uh, picked up like fifteen votes for me, which um, you can get up to five votes for me. So it's, that's does. I'm not saying he's going to be like top ten in the Brownlow, but uh, he did get dropped bef- in the last round. Uh, I did know that, and then either. delisted. <laughs> yeah, so I, I did see that, but um, he'll be That's uh, surely me. someone picks him up, but we'll see. Like it's pretty. You'd think uh, someone who can rack up like thirty um in an AFL game is not going to have target. to go play. Yeah, true, but surely that's too good for like the VAF or something. But Dylan um, yeah, Shields, we'll see what happens high. to his career. <laughs> 
Uh, he was the best young player on Sunday. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> You're all good. Uh, best young player, uh, Nick Caulfield, obviously. Uh, no brain <laughs> for me. Uh, <laughs> no brainer. Don't need to explain that decision. Um, and then oh, I'm going to give them Jesus. a four out of ten because although they did slide down the ladder, I think some of the teams who shot up into the eight improved a lot more than we were expecting. And you could sort of forgive them for finishing below the likes of Sydney, for example. So, uh, yeah, hopefully brighter pastures are ahead for you, Rosef. It's a miracle. Oh, yeah. Cheers, here's Siddle. 